Well, one of the problems of the society is that we're becoming a very specialistic uh, society. You know, like everything you study, you study uh, to the depth of a particular specialization. And the problem with that is sometimes you start looking at components and optimizing components. But then when you think of systems as a whole, you might have an optimized component, but that optimization might be bad for the entire system. Like, you know, like um, uh, be it education or be it how you raise a child. You can't look at the child in isolation and understand whether he or she is faring well. You got to look at the child in relation to the environment, to the parents, to the grandparents, to the relatives, to where he or she is growing and what's happening in the industry outside for you to get an understanding of what's going on with the child. So um, it's, I wouldn't simplify it calling a holistic view because it's not like you have one picture, but it's more like you understand the nitty gritties of the child, you understand the nitty gritties of the society, you understand the nitty gritties of the relationship uh, dynamics within the family, conscious and unconscious, and you understand how all of these things work together. And uh, this is called systemic thinking. Your ability to see things as systems, as connected, interconnected web of things. And I think uh, that is what uh, learning and development is about. It's never an individual or isolated activity. You know, you have these rags to riches stories where people talk about how they just, you know, did some great things all by themselves. But what they don't realize is that there are so many people who helped them on the way. There are so many things that came together at the right time for things to happen. And I think uh, it's very important for our society to start um, continuing to, to specialize in things, but also to promote the idea of, of being good enough in various other things. So that in addition to being a specialist, you also have the capability to know how things go along with each other. Now, sometimes you find musicians, uh, to give you an analogy, you know, who are very good guitarists, or you find people who are very good drummers. And they might be very good at what they do, but they may not be good as a band because they just don't know how the music of the rest of the people are flowing along. So, the, so knowing just an instrument, knowing just music in relation to who they are, isn't as good as being able to play music in relation to everybody else outside and that is what separates a composer from a, from a, from a, from a, other musicians is that they think of music when they compose they think of music as all the pieces coming together they understand the intricacies of what a guitar could bring what a drum could bring what a djembe could bring what a other instrument can bring but they also understand how they all interact with each other when to leave a pause when to keep things going when it should be going on in the background and I think um, personal evolution is like that. You got to look at it, you got to look at the intricacies of the relationship and connection between what is your growth, how does it impact every component of your life, you know, your relationship and uh, um, how does your growth in one area influence the growth in the other area. Because only when you look at it strategically, you could decide which aspects requires the most immersive involvement and commitment from you. See, the thing is there are a million things in which you can evolve, but always evolving and growth comes in two phases. It comes with fascination. You are fascinated by something amazing, and then the second part is the most important. It's a commitment, right? Because I've seen people, especially at the age of 20 to 25, maybe 35 to, who, who, pick a, who, who, who suddenly see somebody playing a guitar, they want to play a guitar. They suddenly see somebody playing a drum, they want to play a drum. They suddenly see somebody starting a business, they want to start a business. They suddenly see somebody uh, starting another business, they want to do that too. Um, so that doesn't help because then you would be just dabbling. But the Im important thing is you could do several things as long as you commit to what you are doing. And the commitment and immersion is a very important aspect of development. It takes time. You got to master something. See, because you could be the average, you can be uh, as an average uh, dabbling around with things and uh, get mediocre results. Or you could be a master at something and then people will break rules to make your demands come true. And uh, they would go out of the way to make sure that you are there in their business. 
And uh, uh, if you want to get to the top, you got to have commitment. You got to commit to learning. You got to commit to becoming better at whatever it is that you do, and uh, or whatever that you aren't doing that you need to start doing. And uh, how do you choose? So if, if if evolving yourself in different areas takes time, it could take three years, it could take four years. Out of a plethora of things that you can improve on, how do you choose? How do you prioritize? What's your strategy? Uh, your strategy can't be, let me first do this. Your strategy has to come from what you want to finally achieve. Because a strategy is long term. You look at the final outcome and you think backwards. So you then decide what is the Im immediate thing that you have to improve and innovate on. And uh, that is why it's so important as a society for us to understand uh, how to become systemic thinkers. How to... Uh, you know, the, the things that you do at home is having an impact on so many people and you may or may not realize that. You know, simple things, you know. Um, today a lot of children go to depression and it's not their fault. Uh, you know, it's, 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 it's something that is, and uh, you know, there was a study that was done by Gregory Bates in, in, in one of the papers he publishes uh, called the Double Bind Theory that starts about, that talks about how Families are responsible for the development of schizophrenic uh, behaviors. And, uh, uh, you know, you might just uh, think that it's a condition, but then there was a start for everything. And, and for, for, for that to start, there was something else that must have happened. And if you could open your eyes and ears to the complexities. Uh, see, because people like to simplify things, but you cannot simplify things more than it's possible. Uh, if something is complex, you know, you can't, you can't say, I will only learn algebra, but I want to fly, I want to, I want to, I want to create an aeroplane. You know, you got to understand the max if you want to create an aeroplane. It's not algebra, you got to understand the max necessary to explain the laws that govern the flight of an, of an aeroplane. So, you got to, you got to, you got to appreciate the complexity involved in things in order for you to be able to maneuver them. And you can't simplify human communication, you can't simplify human relationships into one basket, two basket, or ABC rules. You have to understand the complexities. And then you have to look at all of them together as a whole, and then decide where is the smallest change that you can make that will make the biggest difference.